Hi, my name is Amy Heisey, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw St. Mary Magdalene. We celebrate her feast date on July 22nd, and I'm going to show you how to draw her using simple lines and simple shapes. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw an oval for Mary Magdalene's head. So close to the top of my paper, I'm going to start off drawing my oval shape. And you, of course, can make any changes that you want to in your artwork. It does not have to look exactly like mine, but feel free to follow along and you can match yours to mine or you can make any changes that you wish. So after we get our oval shape in, we're going to put in her neck. So she has two straight lines that come down from the bottom of her head. So I'm going to put one on the left side and one on the right side. And I'm going to connect those with a curved line, kind of like a smile. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting in this jar or vase. Sometimes in artwork you'll see her holding a jar, sometimes you'll see her holding an egg. I'm going to be doing a jar for mine, but feel free to switch it up however you wish. So underneath her um, neck, I'm going to be putting in a slightly curved line, I think kind of like a frown. and. That's going to be almost about the width of her neck, and that's creating the top part of this vaser jar. I'm going to add one line on the left side coming down at an angle, and one line on the right side coming down like that, and that's creating the top part of this vase or jar. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a curve, kind of like a horseshoe shape, because it's a little bit more narrow where it connects to the top of the vase, but it's a little bit wider down at the bottom. So think horseshoe or letter U, and feel free to switch up the shape if you want yours to look a little bit different. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place in her hands. So I'm going to start off right underneath this jar. I'm going to do a little curve kind of like this, and that's going to create her thumb. I'm going to keep that line going around like this for the back of her hand, and then it's going to come up and connect to the jar up at the top for these tall fingers. I'm going to add one line here, and that's going to separate those tall fingers. And you're not going to see all of the tall fingers. You're just going to see maybe one or two because her hand is turned at the side. And feel free to make any adjustments that you need to. I think I'm going to make this back part just a little bit longer, but you can make yours as long or short as you wish on yours. She has this hand that's holding onto the jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the long fingers. I'm going to start off with a line that comes across like this and then curves like that. And that's creating these tallest fingers. Then on this side, I'm going to do a slight curve and connect it. And it's going to look kind of like a mitten. I can see this part of the jar, so I'm going to erase that because I no longer need that. But I do need to separate this tall piece into separate fingers. So I'm going to add some straight up and down lines. One, two, three. And that's going to separate that hand into five fingers. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to be putting in this part of her sleeve. So over here on this arm, I'm going to do a line that connects at the wrist and it's going to go off to the side just a little bit past where her head is. And then it's going to curve around and connect to her wrist like that. So it's going to look like her arm is floating for a little bit, but we'll fix that in just a second. We're going to be putting in two diagonal lines for these sides of the arm. So one here on this left side and one here on this right side of the wrist. And I'm going to connect those with a curve. And that creates that arm. In some paintings, you see her with really long wavy hair, which is what I did in my example. So what I'm going to do is um, over here on the side of her head, I'm going to move my pencil out 
and in and out and in, creating these waves of hair. And I'm gonna stop when I hit her arm. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start at the side of her head and I'm gonna move my pencil out and in and out and in until I hit her arm and stop. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here by the chin. I'm gonna um, start at the neck below her chin and I'm gonna move my pencil in and out in a wavy line and that's going to create the sides of her hair. And it's okay if yours looks a little bit different than mine. Now that we have her hair placed in, we're going to start to add in um, her veil and like this upper part that's kind of wrapped around her body. So at the top of um, your head, you can um, draw a line kind of like a big rainbow or a frown because it kind of curves around her head and stops at her hairline. And that's creating this part of her veil that's wrapped around her head. And we have these parts that are kind of um, wrapped around her body. So kind of where your arm is, you're going to connect that arm to your hair with a curved line. And that's creating those upper parts of her arms like this. Then underneath her arms, we're going to do a curve like a smile that connects one arm to the other arm. So I'm kind of like imagining that she has this veil and like fabric kind of wrapped around the upper part of her body. So that's what this is. For her skirt, we have these two long lines that start um, around where her arms are and one gets curved out and towards the left like this. And the other one goes the opposite way out towards the right like that. So you can make it as wide or as narrow as you wish. And that's gonna create the skirt of her body. I think I'm gonna go just a little bit wider on this side. But you can adjust yours however you like. And we're going to connect them down at the bottom with a curved line like a smile. So that's going to keep her skirt nice and rounded down at the bottom. Like that. For her feet, we just see the little bit of toe peeking out. And it's just a little curved line. So I want to add one here on the left side and one here on the right side. And I have them slightly angled so these little tips of the toes are kind of pointing out towards the left or towards the right. And you can have as much or as little toe kind of peeking out from underneath her dress. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add this little bit of fabric that's peeking out, so that's more of her veil. So here by her arm, I'm going to draw a line that comes down and then I'm going to do a up and down wavy line that connects to her skirt. Over here by this elbow, I'm going to do a line that comes down and I'm going to connect it to her skirt over here. To finish off her hair, I'm gonna start at the top of her head and I'm going to do a line that comes straight down just a little bit. And then I'm going to have it angle off towards the right. And if you want, you can make that line wavy too. And I'm going to do another line over here that comes off towards this left side. And you can make that as wavy or straight as you wish in your artwork. I'm going to darken up these lines so you can see it a little bit easier. But that finishes off her hair. And now we have time to work on her face. I did a really simple face for mine, but you of course can make any changes that you wish to to yours. Right around the middle of her head, that's where I'm going to be putting in my simple circle eyes. So I'm going to do two circles and I think I'm going to give her some eyelashes. So on the edges of these circles, I'm going to add a couple eyelashes. 
And in between her eyes and her hair, I'm going to add some lines for her eyebrows. Her nose is a simple curved line, think kind of like a smile, just a little bit shorter. And in between her eyes and her chin, kind of in the middle, that's where I want to put this little line. So I'm just doing a slight curve and feel free to adjust it however you wish. And in between that nose and that chin in the middle, I'm going to add her smiling mouth. So whenever you finish your Mary Magdalene, unless there's anything else that you want to add, you can go ahead and start coloring her. I'm going to be using markers because that's what shows up well on camera, but I love to outline my artwork with black pens when I use markers. You, of course, can use your favorite art supplies at home and feel free to make any changes or additions. Like maybe you want to give her a halo. Maybe you want to add in an egg or something else. This is your artwork and you can customize it however you choose. Thank you so much for drawing along with me. I would love to see how your drawings of St. Mary Magdalene turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media and know that I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials here on my channel every week. Another way that you can help support my channel is through my buy me a coffee page and art supply wish list. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for drawing along with me and I'll see you in the next video.